Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Q&A, and I have a question today from Stephen. Stephen asks if I can list the top 10 items, inclusive to reloading and shooting, that give the greatest bang for the buck, so to speak, in your accuracy. This is going to be a very long video, so go get yourself a snack and a drink and do anything else you need to, and I'll be right back. While you guys are getting yourself a snack, just a thought for you. This is my opinion, my opinion alone, nobody else's opinion, and it's exactly what you paid for. Worth what you paid for? Anyway, whatever that saying is, this is what I think it takes to get from zero to hero in shooting, especially longer ranges with a rifle. I'm going to do this forward from number one to number 10 instead of the typical backward from 10 to one because I find those videos quite annoying. Let me know if you don't like this format. Anyway, let's get to the video. This is so in-depth that I brought my notes with me. Let's start with the first one. Number one, first and foremost, most important thing is being able to drive the rifle. If you've got some wonky position and you can't torch off around with it pointed the right direction, you aren't getting anywhere. Remember, on an F-class center in the U.S., if you hit the target at all, within the rings, that is, you get at least five points. So 50% of your score is simply hitting the target, which means you're going to make sharpshooter at the very least. So guys, you got to learn how to shoot the rifle. This is important. Get someone to teach you to shoot a rifle if you have some technique problems that you need to get resolved. I've had to go back within the last year and reassess my skills in shooting the rifle and my technique to see where I was giving up just a little bit. All right, now that we know how to shoot a rifle, we need a rifle. And this is another big part of it. A friend once told me that you can't climb 10 feet up a six foot ladder. And he was absolutely correct. If you have a rifle that is some janky deal with a scope mounted to the bolt or some of the other stuff we see on YouTube from time to time, you probably aren't going to shoot very well. You need to have a rifle that is properly put together, properly designed, and has a decent barrel. If you have some barrel that shoots like a shotgun, you aren't going to get anywhere. That's just the way it is. So you need to have a decent rifle. Now, if you have a very top-of-the-line precision rifle like mine, it's going to get you quite a ways just having a good rifle. We're now into expert territory. A good rifle with a good shooter is going to shoot at least expert scores at mid-range, if not better, even with factory ammo. But let's get to the next item, because I think this one is probably the most important one that you guys want to know about. Number three on our list is reloading. That is the ability to load your own ammunition. There's a lot of things in reloading that make a difference. From the consistency of the product, to knowing what's in the product so that you can modify what's in the product, to get the best results from your rifle. It's a tailoring exercise. It's tailoring your ammunition to your needs. And in that, we get to number four on our list. Number four on our list is very simple too. That is a valid load development process. In simple terms, this means using something other than the maximum listed load for your match load. Now, there are times when the maximum load is the right load for a rifle. And there's many times that it is not. Being able to assess the accuracy of individual loads and the differences in those loads is critical to success in getting further in your shooting. Once you can do load development of any sort, of any really significant sort, you're fully into expert and maybe into master scores in F class. That's a good feeling to start climbing up the classifications. So far, all we have is really four things. We have the ability to shoot the rifle. We have a good rifle. We have the ability to reload. And now we have the understanding that we have to pick the correct load in general to get the best results. And we're already at master scores. But let's go further because it's really important, especially on the next one. Number five on my list is the right bullet. Now, what does that mean? Well, when I started out shooting 600-yard matches at Tri-County Gun Club down in Sherwood, Oregon, I was shooting 
some really odd duck bullets because I didn't know any better. I had to learn. And as I learned, I came into someone that was trying to sell a pretty large lot of Burger 155.5 grain full bore bullets because I was shooting a 308 at the time. And I bought them from him. That made all the difference in the world. I didn't have any low developing skill at that point, And I was able to go from where I was at mid-range, shooting maybe master scores, to shooting high master scores. Nothing else was done. And I was able to make high master at mid-range with a 308 out of a Savage rifle that had a custom barrel on it. That is a really good feeling. And it makes you scratch your head a little bit. What do I pay for bullets? And what do I get for the money I pay? I'm not, this is not a commercial for burger. There are a lot of good bullets out there by various manufacturers, but getting the right bullet for your application is critical to success. And with that comes our next item on the list. Number six, getting the right powder charge. That's not a matter of getting it accurately measured. That's not what I'm talking about. It's being able to determine which powder charge is the correct one for your application. Whether you do an optimal charge weight test, use OBT, ladder test, which is the same as optimal charge weight. You're doing chrono plotting. You're guessing. You're using a Satterley method. You're using the Cortina method, which is a ladder at 100 yards, or any other of the methods out there. Using it effectively to properly identify the correct charge is that one piece that you need. We're now wandering into long-range shooting territory. We're past mid-range at this point because you're already a high master at mid-range. Now we're at long range. And we're now talking about getting those scores up from expert to master at long range. Now this is assuming an F open rifle with an appropriate caliber for that. But yeah, you know what I mean. Your scores are going to improve quite a bit when you get the right powder charge. One of the key elements, especially for long range, is understanding how to get a tolerant load. Your powder charge is part of that. Most simply, if you have the wrong powder charge, you may get awesome groups at some ranges and not do so well at long range. I've done it. I've done it more times than I can count. I call it, I call it getting fooled. And I've been fooled more times than this fool should have. But let's get on to the next item, which is just as important. And that's number seven, learning how to do seating depth adjustment. And the methodology behind setting your seating depth correctly is subject to a lot of interpretation, a lot of different opinions. I have opinions how to do it. I'm going to make a video how to do it my way because there's something in the searching for the right seating depth that I didn't show you in the previous video. So in the next load development video that I do, I'm going to show you that. But getting that right seating depth, and I mean the right one, not just one that shoots a small group here or there, but the one that is consistent, reliable, and forgiving is so important that I can't overstate this. It is the one thing that you need to finish up that load because you're trying to tune out the harmonics of the barrel. And when you do it, and you see what it does, you'll know it. It is an amazing thing when it all comes together. But let's get on to our next item because this one is going to kind of surprise some of you. Number eight, using the right primer. I know, I know, there's a primer shortage. You have what you have, use what you got, guys. But if you have multiple primers available to you, say you have a little of this and a little of that, it is worth trying multiple different primers to see which one works best for your load in your rifle because they are all slightly different. The velocity may not change, but the groups certainly will. So getting the right primer is critical to success. Now we are up in those levels of high master at long range with a competitive caliber, of course, or in light conditions. And we're now talking about getting to that point where you're starting to place and win in matches local matches, maybe even regionals. Let's get to number nine, because number nine is the one that I'm sure everybody's waiting to hear about. So let's get right to it. Number nine is precision in your reloading processes. 
Let me explain what I'm talking about here because you may be assuming something that isn't what I'm thinking. We're talking about things like getting the same powder charge in each case. We're not talking about to the milligram. We're talking about to the tenth. If you're making errors and getting one extra grain in some of these and one less grain in some of those, it's going to go all over the target and you're not going to do well. If you can get it close, as close as possible on every case, you're better off. If your sizing process gives you the same interior neck diameter on every case, you're going to be better off. If your sizing process gives you the same length from the shoulder to the base of the case, you're going to be a lot better off because your seating depth is going to be more consistent in reference to the lands. Yes, shoulder bump matters. If you are looking at your process and creating a process that creates minimal runout on a consistent basis so you aren't having to sit there and spin all of them, you're going to shoot more and you're going to get better in your shooting. You got to think about that. How much time do you spend spinning stuff when you could be shooting? Consistently seeding your primers. This one is critical. You got to get them all about the same. You got to get them all touching the bottom of the pocket. If they aren't touching the bottom of the pocket, well, some are going to go bang and some are going to go click bang. And those click bang ones tend to not go at the same speed as the other ones. Just saying. Last item on my list. By the way, if you have a different opinion? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys think are the most important things. Okay. Oh, yeah. Whew. This one, I'm almost afraid to tell you about. The last item on my list is fussing over bullets. What does that mean? Well, that means sorting bullets. It means pointing bullets. It means... Oh, can't believe I'm telling you guys that I do this. Yes, using one of those magic eddy current machines to see if you have any bad bullets. Checking for folded jackets. And generally doing a visual inspection of your bullets before you use them. And then, of course, testing a new lot of bullets before you put them into competition. So, there's my top 10. But, what didn't I mention? Well, I didn't mention brass prep. Other than in the context of sizing the brass, right? That's because I don't find it important. Neck turning, if you have enough neck clearance, doesn't make any difference. Honestly, it doesn't. I see far too many people with no turn necks shooting very, very good scores and beating me on a regular basis. So, obviously, that has no effect. Uniforming primer pockets. Unless you have a tool that is capable of seeding the primers to a consistent depth, reference the same datum that you're uniforming from, you haven't done anything for yourself. Pretty simple concept. Deburring flash holes. Now, okay, I'll give you this one. It is important to fire sort your brass. If you have a piece of brass that constantly throws flyers, throw the piece of brass. That's kind of a sorting thing and an experience thing. And, you know, I haven't seen very many bad pieces of brass because I buy good brass. And then I look at them when I'm getting them ready to go. But once again, that's nowhere near as important as the other things in this list. What else didn't I mention? Well, let me look at my list. I made a list of things I didn't mention. Oh, yeah. Oh. Shooting the right cartridge. Guys, let's be frank here. I shoot a 284 Winchester because that's what I think I can win with. It is the most forgiving cartridge that I have and doesn't wear me out on a long match. Can you shoot a 7 Psalm? Of course you can. 7 300? Yes, 300 Wisdom. Absolutely. 6 Dasher at long range? You bet you can. And I've been beaten by people doing that. 6.5 by 47. 6.5 Creedmoor. 6 Creedmoor. How about a 223 Remington? You bet. They all will shoot. Now, you're going to have to grow some courage in your wind calls to shoot some of those lighter calibers. And you're going to give up some points in sketchy conditions because you just don't have the horsepower to give you a little bit of leeway on those wind calls. 
we're talking about the highest levels of competition in F class in the United States. We're talking that top 25 shooters. If you're as good of a wind caller as the next guy, you may be able to gain a little bit of an advantage with caliber or with a slightly lower drag bullet. But if you give up anything in reliability, in forgiveness, in the ability to accept variations in your shooting process, you haven't done anything for yourself at all. So guys, let's go over the list again. One more time. Number one, you got to be able to shoot the rifle yourself. If you can't shoot the rifle, nothing else matters. It just doesn't matter, guys. You have to be able to drive that rifle. Number two is the rifle itself. And let's expand that just a little bit to the rifle system. That means having rests under the rifle if it's a rest game like F-Class is or the, uh, an appropriate sling if you're shooting a sling game. You know, shooting sling without a sling is harder than shooting it with the sling is. Just a thought there. And that rifle has to be capable of shooting well. Well enough to score a perfect score on the target. In other words, it has to be able to clean the target itself. If that rifle can't clean the target, no amount of load development is going to fix that. That's assuming properly developed loads. Number three is reloading. I'm sorry, but factory ammunition is designed for mass production and for maximum velocities out of those rifles because people think that velocity is what does things for them. And what we're doing in competition shooting is about accuracy. It's about precision. Even if I'm hunting, I would take a more precise rifle over a rifle that's shooting 100 feet per second faster because I know I'm going to put the bullet where I want it. Number four is a valid load development process. The ability to analyze the performance of the rifle and see which load is better. If you can't analyze and see which one's better, your reloading is going to be stuck until you can. Okay, number five is the right bullet. Now, when I say the right bullet, it doesn't have to be the bullet I shoot or this specific bullet or this optimal bullet, it has to be a good bullet, a bullet capable of shooting small. You can shoot a draggier bullet that shoots small, the Lapua 30 caliber 167 Cinar. That thing has the BC of a ping pong ball. Sorry guys, but it does. I shot it through my 308 for a long time, the 308 F open rifle, and shot more cleans than I can count with it at 600 yards. So you don't have to have a low drag bullet to have a good bullet. You just have to have a good bullet. Something consistent from a good manufacturer. Okay, number, where was I? Six. Number six is the right powder charge. Let me check. Check my notes. Yes, number six is the right powder charge. Whether you develop with optimal barrel time, optimal charge weight method, the Cortina method, the Satterley method, or by chrono plotting, which I haven't been able to successfully use yet, it doesn't matter, but you got to get the right charge. You have to get the right charge. If you have the wrong charge, it doesn't matter what you do anywhere else. It's not going to shoot well enough. It just isn't. Now, we're not talking about taking a quarter minute gun and taking it to a three minute gun, but we can certainly turn a quarter minute gun into a one minute gun in a heartbeat. All right. Number seven is the right seating depth. Being able to get the right seating depth and using a methodical approach to determining what the right seating depth is, uh oh, two is's in a row, here we go, is one of the most important things in getting that optimal load for your rifle. Number eight, I know, controversial, primer. Which primer? Because you can take a load that's developed with a Wolf primer and put a Federal 210M in it, and it might be shooting better, or it might be shooting worse, you don't know. CCI 200, how about a BR2? It doesn't really matter which primer. Getting the right primer for the powder and for the cartridge is critical to getting the optimum out of your ammunition, but is far less important than getting the right powder charge, having the right bullet, and having the right seating depth. All right, let me look at my notes again. Here we go. Oh yeah, number nine, precision in your reloading processes. This, this is at the small end of the list for a reason, because I can reload sloppy stuff and outshoot a percentage, I didn't say a large percentage, I said a percentage, of the other F-Class shooters. The simple truth is, this is a very small part of the equation. 
you can sit there and make super precise ammo with the wrong bullet you haven't got anything super precise ammo with a max charge because it goes the fastest and you haven't got anything that's going to win wrong seating depth you got me well heck if you get the the precision wrong on your reloading process it's going to vary your seating depth but let's say your your shoulder bump changes from one thousandths to three thousandths back and forth. That's only a two thousandths difference in your effective seating depth. If you did your seating depth testing correctly, it'll forgive that. That's how low this is on the importance scale. All right, let's get to the last one. Number 10. Oh, fussing over bullets. I, I, I almost hate to tell you guys this, but I fuss over bullets a little bit too much. And honestly, you can just pull them out of the box and shoot them and you shoot pretty good scores. But if you fuss over them and point them and do all the things that I do, there is a little bit to be had. It's not very much. And there's a little bit of forgiveness to be had in your wing calls through pointing. All right, guys, as I said, if you disagree with my list, put it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on it because I'm not automatically right because I think it. I always have new things to learn. Until next time, stay safe, do some load development, and I'll see you.